that are not getting the message and walking out and going to other churches? Those are the questions that I ask instead of numbers inside the church. Amen. Okay. And the answer to both of your questions is found, as Dan has said, in uh, Revelation 3 and verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. In the words of Jesus in 18, says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye sad, that thou mayest see. That's what we need, is to be able to see. We need to be in agreement with God. Amen. Even when he tells us things we don't want to hear. Praise the Lord. You know? Amen. If God says, get your house in order, you're going to die, don't ask for more time. Tell him, thank you, we'll get her done. Yes, sir. By the grace Amen. of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, thank you for this morning. <laughs> Pastor Ricky would like to say something, brother. So. I appreciate everything y'all said. Thank you, Garcia. That was beautiful. <clears throat> You know, I say this all the time, and I don't know if people hear it or if they're getting tired of hearing it, but it's not that we're so blind is our problem. Our biggest problem is we think we can see. Amen. Wow. And when we think we can see, it means that we think we know something. Right? And the Bible says that you know nothing as you ought to know it. So we have to become, as Jesus said, like little children. Instead of blocking things out of our mind, because I grew up saying, knowing that this is red. Mm. And I refuse to believe somebody tried to tell me this was blue. And I know it's red. Yes, Ms. Buffy. Well, you started off your talk um, talking about the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so when we really analyze that, it's, you were talking about the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? And that's where we have to look. It's more than just being nice and healing people and doing all that stuff. What Jesus did was completely, totally surrender himself to the Father. He made no plans for himself. And it was the Father who led him to who he was going to see that day. Amen. And so my heart just tells me when, when we're really surrendered, really surrendered, <laughs> everything, mm -hmm. things are going to change. Amen. Well, it's a shame to see that it, think, it seems like in North America, as we say, um, America, that we have to have everything taken away before we're actually going to realize and see what it is we refuse to look at. Um, because we are increased with goods and think that we are in need of nothing. So, but I, I want to warn you, Sabbath keepers, that someday you're going to be called terrorists. Yes. You know, you're going to be called horrible, horrific names. Watch some of the people that are now being called out for masking or unmasking or whatever it is. Um, these people, it's, it's just craziness. What's going on in Ottawa? Have you seen your, if you notice your grocery shelves getting a little bit thinner? You know, uh, all the truck drivers up there that are saying they're not going to be vaccinized. And they're telling them if they're not crossing the border, do you think that's going to affect the flow of commerce? Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're supposed to be having haystacks today. Well, um, I guess that, what do you, the cream cheese stuff? It's very difficult to come by these days. So, but we have some. Praise the Lord. We have connections up in Georgia. So I don't know. <laughs> but somebody got some here. So it's all good. Anyways. 
it's craziness. The times that we live in are not easy. And, and, and people are trying to teach people how to think in a way that's not right. Listen, I just want you to, to take this common understanding of how Jesus works and how the devil works. Jesus woos, okay? He woos. He does not force. He does not threaten. He does not beat you into submission, okay? Somebody that is acting that way is acting the part of the enemy, not the part of the Savior of the whole world. You see, some people are not going to be in heaven, okay? But they're not going to be in heaven for their sins because Jesus died for their sins. They're going to be not in heaven because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. You don't go to hell for believing a lie. You go to hell for not believing the truth. Okay? Hebrews verse chapter 4. I want to begin in verse 4. Hebrews chapter 4 beginning in verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, did you hear that? My rest, he calls it. This is God's rest, right? God's rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter in, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of what? Unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then he would, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Amen. For he that entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. As it was said in Sabbath school by Brother B, you can fool some of the people some of the time, and you might even be able to fool a lot of the people, but you never fool God. Never. Never fool God. When you look into the eyes of God, He looks right into your soul. So what, let us be in agreement with Him. Let us follow Him. You know, He said, uh, I do not change. There's nothing new under the sun, brothers and sisters. The same thing that happened before is going to happen again. You remember how the plagues fell in Egypt? <laughs> Okay? All of God's laws had been done away with, except for one. Mm -hmm. Right? Except for one. And what was that law? It was the Sabbath. So. They told Pharaoh they wanted to go out. And they wanted to <coughs> worship their God. And Pharaoh says, you're lazy. You're just lazy. Now you're going to make bricks without straw. You're going to work through the Sabbath. What happened, brothers and sisters? The plagues began to fall. Right? Did they hurt anybody that chose to be with the camp of the Israelites? Yes. Not a person. Those, those things fell upon this earth. And the same thing's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. There's only one law that has not been done away with yet. And it's that one holding a gun to your head. Hello. 
You know, when, when this thing all starts to play out, it's probably going to be a harder time for NASCAR and football and other things in the beginning. But you better take, take notice. Because, you know, you, you can't just throw the, the frog in the boiling hot water because he jumps out. That's why it's a slow cook. Because they don't know what's coming. And this is what's happening to this world. If you're paying attention, the Pope is screaming at the top of his lungs about Sunday. And if you come against the Sunday, then you don't care about children. You're a terrorist. You don't care about the world. You don't care about people. You know? We are right there on the precipice. Brothers and sisters, grace for today is received by believing and obeying in the here and now. Tomorrow is not here. And tomorrow may not come. I have no crystal ball. I don't know what tomorrow is. We assume we have tomorrow. But we know nothing. God knows everything. And He's given us everything that we need. And furthermore, all of these books that he's given us, typologies to show us the way, how things are going to play out, it's not a secret. We know exactly how this thing's going to play out. I mean, not all the intricate details, but the big picture, we understand. There's nothing new under the sun. Jesus says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. Okay? Adam and Eve. We're not Jews. Sabbath and marriage was given in the garden. And we will keep Sabbath throughout eternity. Hallelujah. Throughout eternity. Do you know what that mansion is that God is building you? It's built in heaven? That's your Sabbath home, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. That's where you go and to worship. You would have a home wherever, I don't know, on this planet or something, I don't know. But that is where we come with Shabbat. The biggest, most beautiful condo you've ever made. <laughs> All right, my friends. Our closing song is 440. There you go. Yeah, yeah.
you that you are so loving and so kind and so patient and so more willing to forgive us than we are even to ask for forgiveness. Lord, I pray that you work on us as a body of believers. Amen. Help us to corporately and individually give you our wills so that we can be the people that you've called us out to be, that we can finish this work and that we can go home because, you know, I think many of us and myself included are just, we're happy here, I think. And we shouldn't be. Lord, I want to confess my own desire to be here. Let us see you and give everything to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.